Hey, this is Warren Redlick. There was a space yesterday with Elon Musk here, Kathy Wood leading, and this guy Charles Roberts you're going to see in a minute. There was this brief conversation in the middle of a much longer space that honestly was mostly not that great. There was a brief moment where Charles Roberts asked a question. There's this whole thing with prompt engineering Elon to get him to say something he hasn't said before or get him to say something that really gets you thinking or connects something that you don't hear a lot. So Roberts asks a question, and Elon responds, and I think we get something interesting. Let's dive into that. Time, AI will have been a net truth uh, improver or detractor from where we are today. I mean, speaking for, at least for Grok, I think it will be a significant uh, truth improver. That is literally our goal, is to be maximum truth-seeking, maximally curious, minimizing the, the, the error between, perce between perceived reality and described reality and actual reality, and always acknowledging the error, not being too confident about it. So that's a critical, critical point. And if you understand how they train FSD, I think you understand what he's saying. Trying to minimize the error that the FSD, whether it's robot, whether it's the car, or whether it's Grok, it is trying to understand reality. And in the case of FSD, the car is making predictions. That object is a stop sign. That car is going to move this way. And when reality doesn't conform to what the FSD predicts is going to happen, that's error. You recognize the error and you train to reduce the error. This is something I think people really don't grasp. And the goal with Grok is now to make predictions about the world, to make attempt to explain things about the world, and then test, did our prediction about the world, did our explanation of the world, was it accurate? Were we able to see error how do we identify what the error is? How do we measure the error? And then how do we train to reduce that error? That is fundamentally, I think, what they're trying to do. I hope that makes sense. There's more here. There will be a competition for truth, and people will uh, tend towards the one that they think is most accurate. So, and, and if there's at least one AI that is aiming for maximum accuracy, I think it pushes all of the AIs to aim for maximum accuracy. So the role of XAI is to develop an artificial intelligence or machine learning system, a large language model, whatever you want to call it, something that is trying to explain the universe and is aiming for truth and accuracy. One of the criticisms that many of us have for ChatGPT and other AIs is they've gone woke, they've got political correctness. They won't say something that's true if they think it violates some sort of politically correct guideline. And the problem is that consumers, when they don't have a choice, have to live with that. But when XAI is there and XAI is offering a choice that is seeking maximum truth, consumers will choose the one that gives them truth over the one that gives them political correctness. And Elon, I've left it out of the, the clip that I'm playing for you. Elon said that's the point of, of X, Elon taking over Twitter, now X, is it is aiming for maximum truth rather than political correctness. And that forces Facebook, Meta, whatever, YouTube, to trend more towards the truth, because if they don't go towards the truth and X is going towards the truth, consumers want the truth. They want accuracy. That's, and as long, as long as there's nobody out there pursuing that, then you can pursue whatever you want. But once there's somebody actually offering consumers accuracy and truth, they want that. And if you're not doing that, you're going to lose. And X is growing and Grok is growing and we're going to see all this. And so the same thing with the cars. The self-driving cars that Tesla's using are doing their best job of predicting the world. They're doing their best job of, of, of predicting what navigation will be the safest, will minimize the risk of accident. And if it perceives the world wrong or it makes a navigation error, that's something to train on. We'll see this with Robot, with Tesla Optimus, the, the, the bot. It's making predictions about a different space, right? The cars are on roads. The bot will operate in a much broader array of environments. It's going to make predictions about how it will handle walking on this terrain. It'll make predictions about what certain behavior is going to be that it's seeing. And it will encounter things that might be right and might be wrong. Grok will attempt to answer questions, maybe from us, maybe from internal questions, trying to understand, you know, maybe what's going to happen when we do this physics experiment and the physics experiment results are different. Okay, now we can try to train on that. What do we get wrong? How can we do better? So I think that's a really important topic. I'm not sure everyone gets it. 
But I just wanted to cover that because I think it's critical. And thanks to Stephen Mark Ryan for doing a, a, a trim or an edit of this space so that I was able to do this. I actually was listening to the original space. And I, I'm sorry, I love Kathy Wood. I don't think she did the best job of asking questions. It was more like she was talking rather than, like, you've got Elon Musk. Ask Elon questions. Ask him something he hasn't asked before. Get him to talk about something he hasn't talked about before. I think Charles Roberts actually kind of did that when he brought up this AI thing. Not that Elon's never talked about it before, but he made it something that Elon certainly hasn't talked about much. And I think he gave it a little bit more color, even though it was brief. So I hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching.